welcome to Tiny Table Talk for The Challenge Season 38, Ride or Dies for Episode 4. Now, we have a lot to cover in this video, so let's start off talking about... Nelson had a really great episode this past week. I think that this is the best episode that Nelson has ever really had. I mean, he did do really well in the Invasion of the Champions finals that he almost won. He lost by two minutes, I believe, or something around there, less than two minutes. But I think in quite a while, this is a Nelson episode that is up at the top of his tier. This is on his highlight reel because this is the best he's played in recent seasons, in recent episodes. He Not only did he get his first challenge win since Vendetta's, in the middle of Vendetta's 54 consecutive daily challenge losses, but on top of that, he has great strategy, thanks in part by Norris and Olivia. And I have to say that this episode and this season seems to be set up for Nelson to go far, that he is in a really good position. First of all, he finally has a good social game and a good social standing within the challenge, within the house, as well as having two very strong, smart women have his back 100%. I mean, Nuri's came up with a strategy where she should be the one hanging in the daily challenge and have Nelson hit into her that would give them the best chances of one, grabbing the flag, and two, winning that daily challenge. And then Nelson, who does not want to say a vet's name whatsoever, then gets bailed out by his challenge girlfriend for the season, Olivia, who comes up with the plan of, okay, if you want to send me down there, this is how you do it to one, keep us safe, and two, to keep your hands clean. This was such a good episode for Nelson. It's just really funny that a lot of people were giving him the credit to being the mastermind when he had a ton of help. I think Nelson has to be super buzzed about this and how this all played out because this could have gotten really hairy. He never really had to make a decision in the past four seasons that he was on. He never was into power. He was kind of always the one being thrown into elimination. And now he does have to make a decision. He does make a decision and there's basically no blowback whatsoever. It's really, really impressive how this episode went strategy wise. Um, but I would say if I had to give percentages on it, it was like 30, 70, where 30% of it was Nelson and 70% was Olivia and Norris working their magic and their brains. Those three were the three stars of this episode that really showed how strong a game sense that they have. And I was just really impressed by their performances overall this episode. So as we all know, Nelson broke his 54 daily losing streak. And it got me thinking, what other streaks could be broken on this cast? Like, what could happen this season with this cast that could make some sort of headlines or history for the player involved? Um, the first one I want to talk about is the most times up for elimination. When taking just a quick glance at some of the seasons and how they went by, I found that Johnny Riley on Free Agents was in the draw seven times. And Olivia and Horacio has already been nominated three times in four episodes. Think about that. If they even tie it seven times being nommed and staying in the game, that's nuts. But eight times? And if they stay past that, like if they still don't get eliminated or they keep on pulling the safe dagger, that's crazy. Devin and Cheyenne, they got eliminated the first time and then they were going through the whole season and had to pick the White Skull. And they were able to get out of that draw a lot of times in a row. They were lucky, lucky, lucky. CD holds a record for the most season appearances until finally winning where he won in his ninth season. The three players that could beat this record and slash tie it is Anissa, Nani, and Nelson. If Anissa goes on to win this season, she would smash this record with 16. This is her 16th season. 10 season appearances without a finals appearance. So even if she just makes the finals, she would break her 10 season appearances 
without a finals appearance. Nani, this is her 12th season, so she would also break that record. And this is Nelson's ninth season. So he would actually tie CT's record if he were to win this season. Veronica holds the record for the least amount of money won by a three time or more champ. She only has 79K prize money won and she hasn't made the final since Inferno 2 season 10. The last time she won was season eight Inferno. So that prize money wasn't that that big. And prize money now, you just get handed like 250K, half a million if you want. I mean, War of the Worlds 2, everybody got 250. Other fun facts that I found that aren't necessarily records, but could be records that could be broken this season. I found out that no pair team made up of two brand new players have ever won the season. There have been four times a vet rookie, and when I talk about rookie, I mean someone on their debut season made it to the finals and won. You have Darrell and Aviv in season 12, Fresh Meat. You have Landon and Carly in season 19, Fresh Meat 2. Kara and Jamie in Bloodlines and CT and Amber in season 36, Double Agents. It's interesting to me that no pair team made up of two brand new players have ever won the season that they made their debut season on. And it's clear to see why. Everybody just goes for the, the rookies anyways, the brand new players anyways. They throw them in early and often. But it's just interesting that that we haven't seen that. And if that could happen even this season, that would be record-breaking, record-shattering uh, to start your challenge career off becoming champions and hopping over people that have played this game for years. I hope it could happen. It would be really, really incredible if it could happen, but we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, what do you think about these records? What do you think is the most likely to happen to be broken or which drought do you think could be broken? Uh, let me know down in the comment section below. All right, let's talk about two teams. One team that I feel like is riding high and the other team that I think could be dying. And I'm gonna be really chalky for the riding part of this. And I'm just gonna talk about Bananas and Nani. Now you might be saying, why are you talking about Bananas and Nani? Of course they're in a good position. They are two vets, two strong vets, two well-insulated vets, and they're not even really that big in danger. But that's why I wanna talk about them. Bananas, a seven-time champ, should have the biggest target on his back. Nobody should want him in the game. He spent a ton of his career after taking the money from Sarah being thrown in over and over and over again, being eliminated from the game quite early in some of those seasons. Yet here he is, kind of just meandering around the house, walking around, not even having to be on camera. I mean, this past week's episode, he only got four confessionals. And I think the week before that, he got only three confessionals. I don't know if this team is riding high, but maybe they're so high that they put it on cruise control and put this thing on autopilot. Nobody is worried about taking a shot at them. Yes, it's early, but I just am like kind of surprised that nobody cares that Bananas and Nani are in this game. Nani has made it to the finals the last two seasons. Bananas is a seven time champ and they're not even getting screen time from production. The rookies are really help bolstering this season and giving it content and giving it confessionals and giving it strategy. Whereas Bananas and Nani are like I said, I think putting it on cruise control. Now the team that I'm gonna put in the dying category, this may be a reach because this was only their first episode, but I'm nervous about Darrell and Veronica. Was it not just a couple of episodes or even last episode where we saw multiple scenes of Bananas coming into the game and Devin being, thank goodness you're here, Bananas. And then Jordan enters the game and then Bananas like, Jordan, thank goodness you're here in this game. Darrell and Veronica walk in, and there is no scene of Bananas, Devin, Jordan going, oh, Darrell, we're so glad you're in this game. No, what do we get? We get a ton of confessionals going, we don't have a lot of numbers. Nelson throws Darrell and Veronica directly into the elimination, despite being a vet vet pair. Nobody blinks or bats an eye when they get nominated. They're just like, oh yeah, Darrell and Veronica? They can be thrown in. Makes me worried for them. Makes me feel like Darrell and Veronica are looked at as more of the expendable side of the veteran alliance almost, where they're like, yeah, we could take them or leave them. If they're the first ones getting a shot taken at them early, then we'll be a little annoyed, but we're not gonna like turn the house upside down and try to take people out. That's just the kind of vibe I got from this episode. I just feel like 
it's going to be a tough path for Darrell and Veronica moving forward unless they do get in good with Amber and the rookie side and the underdog side and maybe they could start stirring up the numbers. Darrell did say that he wants to ruffle up some feathers in the preview to next week's episode so I'm hoping something big happens and uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Now it's time to read some comments from my Thursday's review and recap video and the first comment comes from Panster who says can't wait for Amber to win a daily so she nominates Fessel and the Big Brother numbers for not having her back last and this season. Oh my gosh, please. I'm so happy that Amber got at least a few more confessionals, a, f a little bit more screen time than she did the past couple of episodes, which makes me feel like with Darrell coming in, maybe there's something stirring up. Maybe something does happen. Maybe she can get into power and maybe shake up this game. I would love it if her and Chauncey got into power and did exactly that. Philip comes in with a comment saying, Veronica and Darrell already getting more confessionals and screen time than Casey and Kenny have all season. I do want to say I'm keeping track of every single confessional because of the fantasy games that I'm putting on together with me, Chantel, and Chris, as well as on my Patreon, patreon.com slash angelcakevids. And I have to say, Darrell and Veronica did get way more confessionals already in one episode than Casey and Kenny had all season in the first four episodes, really the last three episodes because they weren't in episode one that much. But as of right now, Casey and Kenny have eight total confessionals combined and Darrell and Veronica have 14. Julia comes in with a comment saying, Tommy was living his best notebook life. If you're a bird, I'm a bird. If Tommy would have pulled her up a bit, I really think they could have gotten that flag. Oh my gosh. That's going to play back into your brain over and over and over again if you're Tommy. Like, if you could just grab that flag, at least you're in the running to possibly win this daily challenge. Winning into power to save yourself and maybe make some extra deals. And uh, <laughs> that's a great reference. Great reference. Struggling at Art says, okay, but my biggest surprise so far is how well Anissa and Jordan are working together. I really enjoy their chemistry as a pair, actually. False ride or die, but it turned out good, to be honest. They looked incredible. They looked like legit best friends during that daily challenge. It was a little cute when TJ was saying the winners are between two teams, Nelson and Norris and Jordan and Anissa. And then when the camera turned to Jordan and Anissa, they were like, no, you, you. Joseph J coming in with a comment saying, this is Nelson's best episode yet. He won his daily challenge after seasons of fails and his strategizing went really well. Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, Nelson is set up really well this season with Norris and Olivia having his back 100%. They have the strategy and he's ready to compete. And yeah, this is his one of his best episodes. He's a great partner to Norris. I love their team chemistry. I love the positioning they have in this game. And yeah, I just think that this is his season right now. This is, he's set up really well this season. Christina B saying, not gonna lie, was hoping that Nelson would have nominated Fessy to get back at him for playing dirty during their elimination challenge. Gosh, that would have been incredible. Incredible, but of course it was not gonna happen. Oh man. And also the same thing with Norris being like, so what do you want to do? And Nelson's like, well, I know you want to nominate two vets. And it's like, oh yes, please just do it. Come on, take a shot. Let's do it. Come on, rip it and stick it. Let's get it going. And he was just like, I can't do that. And you understand why, but like, you still like put your head in your hands and you just go like, why can't you though? Just like spice it up just a little bit. When are you going to do it? You know, how long are you going to wait to fall on these vet vet numbers when you could start making the, the separations now, let's divide this house in half. I mean, Norris pulls in Nelson to the Amber crowd over there. I mean, come on, let's start pulling in the numbers. Let's get this going, man. I can't wait till episode, what, eight, nine, ten, when they have no other choice? Oh, we'll make the decision when I have no other choice? Ugh, come on, man. Let's do it now. Episode four. Let's go. Quentin comes in with a comment saying, I don't know why Tommy and Annalise didn't switch places before the elimination. Maybe they had to have the man pulling the rope, but that would be weird. I agree. I feel like they should have swapped spaces. If they didn't let them have the option of swapping places, they should have. 
Uh, just give him the option, just in case, like, why not? Bad MF35 says, I like that Jordan thought Nelson was a genius. Nelson isn't the mastermind, Olivia is 100%. When he said that, I thought he was, like, joking or would have been like, yeah, I'm joking, or, like, rolled his eyes, or... It was hard to tell if that was supposed to be sarcasm or if he was being genuine, but, I mean, it didn't change. Like, it just really felt like it was genuine. <laughs> so, I, I don't know, it's just weird. At no time... In Nelson's career on the challenge, any season, any episode, has anyone viewed Nelson as a mastermind? That's why I would tell people, what has changed this season? What's the difference this season to where now you think Nelson is a mastermind? Hmm, maybe it's Norris, his partner? Maybe it's Olivia, who he's spending a lot of time with? The next comment comes from Ace, who says, I hope all the new rookies come back. Johnny, Horacio, Olivia, Kim, Colleen, and Tommy and Annalise, they're showing a lot of heart and brains, just hoping they can pull off another when they need it. First of all, left off Raven. I don't know if that was intentional, but it seems like it was. And I really enjoyed Kim and Colleen this episode. Mainly Kim. We have not got to see their personalities. They didn't get a lot of screen time coming into this episode, but this episode, I really enjoyed them. I, I liked all their one-liners. I thought they were funny. I thought they brought a lot of fun to the show again. I don't know. This is, I Somehow, I'm like, wow, Kim and Colleen, I was thinking that they were boring. That's why they weren't getting a lot of screen time and confessional time. It was just like they were waiting to show us their true personalities. And I have to say, I really like Kim and Colleen and the way they performed in the elimination. I liked their... Um, they're confessionals. I just think I just think they're really good. I think they're really fun. They're a fun team. They're a fun duo. And the final comment comes from Jacob who says, I don't know about Kim and his grandma, but I love visiting my grandma on Sundays. We'd love to hear it, Jacob. But that is it for this tiny table talk. What'd you think about this episode? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought about the Nelson mastermind. Or would you give more credit to Olivia and Norris or Maybe give more credit to Nelson. Let me know down in the comment section below. What do you think about my riding and dying pairs? Do you agree? If you disagree, let me know your riding and dying pairs down in the comment section below. And do you visit your grandma on Sundays? Let me know that as well. I want to give a special shout out. Thank you to everyone who supports me over at patreon.com slash angelcakevids. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to everyone who is watching this video of this point. I'll be back very, very soon with more Challenge 38 content, more challenge content, more content in general. But until then, peace. Hey.